Hello and welcome to Cran Talk Art here in the southwest of England. Today we're going to have a look at making another one of my ball animals. This time we're going to make a hippo. So I'm sort of going through a bit of an African phrase at the moment. We've done an elephant, we've done a giraffe and now we're going to have a, go a little fat hippo. I think this is a perfect little thing for this round ball shape because they are quite tubby things generally. So first of all, as it's a ball make, we need to start off with a ball. So we have a ball of clay here, 350 grams of clay. If we left it solid like this, though, we would have a problem. This is going to be fired, so we need to make sure that any air that's inside can escape. Um, so there may be lumps and cracks and things in there. Also, it's unlikely to dry being this thick, and it's absolutely essential that we get it dry before we can actually fire it. So I'll just make a slight adjustment to the camera there. So first thing I do, we've got this clay. We need some tools. So these are the tools I'm, I've been using today. We're going to roll out the pieces on the template and the template will be available on Etsy uh, to that thickness. So I need guide sticks. That's five millimetres and a rolling pin. I've already rolled my pieces out. Before I started, I actually took the templates. I cut the pieces out from the template, stuck them to a piece of cardboard and then cut out the pieces from the cardboard. That way it'll make it stronger when you're actually using it. So we've got rolling pins, dry sticks, I've got some lollipop sticks to use for smoothing. I've got a pencil and a paintbrush, which I'll use for his eyes. And the knife, which you need for most things. It doesn't have to be a potter's knife, any knife will do, an old kitchen knife, something like that. Uh, this happens to be my favourite knife. So this is the one I'm going to use. So I'm going to start by cutting this lump of clay in half. And you can see already there's a little patch of air in there which if I hadn't dealt with would actually cause a problem. Next thing I do then is I'm going to turn this into two pinch pots. For those of you who are familiar with pinch pots have been know my technique. I put it into my non half I put the pot into my non-dominant hand. I get my thumb of my dominant hand, in this case my right hand, push it into the middle of that clay until I can feel my thumb that don't go right through. Like that. And I keep my thumb still and move my fingers around stroking the clay up as I go. So like that and stroke it up and I turn it round in my hand as I go keeping my left hand pushing against it so that it doesn't flatten out. We want nice compact cups of clay. Once I've gone round once I go around again and now what I'm aiming to do is to feel where it's thicker and where it's thinner and where is it a bit thicker thin it out a bit. I want it to be around about five millimeters thick all the way around. So go around, feeling it, checking it, making sure it's not too thick at the bottom of the pot. Smoothing off any bits that are looking a bit awkward all the way around. So I've got quite a nice little cup. Then we do the same with the other piece. So put it in my hand, push my thumb into the middle, go around it, smoothing that clay up, pulling that clay up all the way around. And this will allow you not only to shape it, but at this point we're also pulling out any air bubbles that are in it before they can cause us a problem. And then I go through and pinch it. Some people say to me, why don't you wedge your clay? Well, if you're doing a process like this, you don't need to because one of the key reasons you wedge is to get rid of air bubbles. And this, of course, will get rid of them quite easily like this process. So I've now got two cups like that. I'm going to put these two together to make a ball. So I get my knife and I do some scoring, put some crosses all the way around the top. This allows the clay to stick together better. Do it to the top one, do it to the other one. Doesn't have to be too detailed, just as long as you rough that surface up. And then I get some liquid clay. So she's just an ordinary clay mixed up with some water. You might notice that this one is quite a different colour and this is because we're using up the end of a load of bags. We've changed to a different uh, type of clay. It's not directly different. They're both stoneware clays. Uh, and when fired, they're actually both the same colour. Uh, and they have the same shrinkage. So we can get away with this. So now I've got to put these two together. So I have a look at them. And I can see that's got a bit of a raised bit there. And that's got a bit of a low bit there. So I'm going to put those two together like that. If you find that your pot's too small or too big, just pull it around, shape it until you can get it all to go together. And like mine, it probably won't be perfect, but if you coax it, you should get it to seal up like that. Then we need to make sure this ball is gonna to stay together. So we're gonna get a piece of clay and we're gonna roll it out into a 
coil, like that, nice thin one, which I'm then going to put around the joint. Now, I don't need to add extra slip because you can see there's quite a bit of slip oozing out of the, the join, so that's fine. I can just lay this over the top around that join. It's not long enough, but that's not a problem. We just get another bit of clay, roll that out. It doesn't have to be one continuous piece. Again, just follow that join around. It goes a bit all over the place like that. So we have a coil of clay all the way around it. Then we get one of our lollipop sticks. Let's move the clay up onto one pot and down onto the other. Don't be tempted to try and do it just along there. You'll thin the clay out, but you won't actually seal it. So we go all the way around like this, sealing it down. And this now is trapping a bubble of air inside, which will give us something to push against as we go on to the next stage. Again, this stage is the same for all of my ball pot creations. So if you've mastered this on one of my others, you can skip over this bit. There you go around there. See it all down there. That. all the way around at this point we now have a pocket of air so I can push against this quite hard now without it collapsing smooth it down if it does start collapsing when you do this check it over and see make sure you haven't got any cracks in the clay which can allow the air to escape and if you have fill them in with a little bit of clay if it completely collapsed you might have to start again okay so I'm just now going round, smoothing in the worst of that. This is what I call the potato phase, one potato. So having done that, I'm now just going to go around it, pat it, smooth it, start to make it a bit more ball-like, roll it around on the board if necessary. And one of the things I like to do with these is to actually finish them off in a bowl. So I've got here a nice little wooden bowl. It doesn't have to be a wooden bowl. You can use a ceramic bowl. A pottery bowl or you can use a plastic bowl whatever but just something that's got a nice little curve on it and we put that in there and we roll it around in that curve putting a just a little bit of pressure on it so I said we've got a bubble of air in there which we can push against obviously don't put too much pressure on it or you'll burst it a bit like a balloon but enough to get it to change shape and see how it's starting to become rounder and smoother while you go if you find you've got big areas where you can't get it smooth like that you just get a little bit of clay, dip it in the slip, put it in, and you can just smooth them in. And there will always be one or two patches that you need to work on a little bit. Like by here, I can do that with my fingers, I think. I can probably smooth that out. Okay, and by there. Oh, there's quite a big hole there, so let's put a little bit in there. Smooth it in. Always make sure you work it in, though. So you don't want anything that's going to pop off because you've got air trapped under it. Like that. Around, go back in the bowl. Give it another roll. Okay. Doesn't have to be totally perfect. Some of this we're going to cover up with the face and the, the legs and things. So. I have to make sure when I choose what's going to be the top and the bottom that I choose the worst bits. Okay, but I think that'll do for him. So that's the main part of the body. Next thing we have to do is the legs. So I've got 70 grams of clay here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape it so it fits onto this round template. So start off by rolling it into a ball. Which is round. So you can see it's a tiny little bit big at the top, so I'm just going to shape it again. Like that. Yeah, that's close enough, so the, the disc covers it. So this is going to be the feet eventually. So what we're going to do first is we're going to score it. Put some slip on it. At this point, we look at our hippo's body and we decide what's going to be the top and what's going to be the bottom. Well. That's a little bit rough around the bottom here, so I think I think that's going to be the bottom of my hippo there. So I'm going to put that on there. Mm -hmm. Change my mind. What's that better there? So let's smooth that out. Yeah, that's going to go there. Okay. And then what I do is I then twist and twist and twist and twist until it stops moving. 
eventually it starts to stick. There we go. That. Then I'm going to get a bit of clay and I'm going to put it round that lump of clay I've just put on to make sure it stays attached. So again, long rolls, we struggle making coils. Doesn't matter. If you if you really struggle making coils, just cut strips of clay. You don't have to have a coil. That's going to go around there. Again, I don't need to add extra slip because you can see it's oozing out of the, the joint. What I do need to make sure though with this is that when I put it on, I really push it into the crack so that it's, there's no air trapped behind it. And then smooth it up onto the, the base and up onto the body. Right. All the way around. It really goes into that crack. It doesn't cause us problems later. There we go. Now, when I'm doing a sculpture, I tend to work quite fast um, and work on the theory that I can smooth it out, tidy it all up later. It's all about getting the construction together first and foremost. So I've got something that looks a little bit like a hot air balloon at this point. So now we've got to decide where his head's going to go, because that's going to mean how we mark out his feet. So let's have a look at him. I think, I think, I think, I think, make sure it's straight. Um, okay. I'm going to go with the front being there. So I'm just going to put a little cross to mark where the head's going to go, so I know where I'm working at. And then directly down from the cross, I'm going to mark the legs like that. Then I turn it upside down, and I cut through this lump of clay down to the body, like that. And then, trying to make sure I get the four pieces equal, I cut again, like that. So that's going to be his four legs. So I'm going to pull them out like that. Now again, if you like, you can leave them like that. It's perfectly acceptable. I like to shape mine a bit though, so I'm just going to put my fingers in there, round them off a little bit. And by doing these, these are sort of about the thickness that we can get away with being solid. Any thicker, we'd have to hollow them, but these will be okay. As long as you've made sure you've gone right through it. If you don't, your legs blow off. Okay. Right, so I've got most of them together, so I should put him back there. So now let's actually get on with turning this lump of clay with legs into a hippo. So there are a number of pieces to this template, which are here. Uh, you have the main head, the face, these pieces, which I'll explain in a minute. You have two of those and a nose and a lower mouth, a lower lip. So. earlier as they say. So what we do is we get the main part, so this is the, the main part of the head. You want to make sure you don't get air trapped under it, so one way to make sure that this isn't going to be a problem is we're actually going to put uh, a hole in this. You'll see when we put that on in a bit, but for now I'm going to put that on, so that's going to go there, so I'm going to scrape it, like that, slip on it, and when you attach anything like this these are, these are danger points, having a, a slab of clay like this that you're going to put onto something. The danger is you're going to get something air trapped behind it uh, and it's going to cause you a problem. So always put it on, start from the middle, wiggle it at the middle, and then work your way out from the middle to the edges to make sure there's no air trapped under it. Like that. So that's the first part of the head I've put on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth it all in later, but for now I'm just going to Get it like that. Okay. Next part is the face part one. That's this bit. And this will be the eyes and the first part of the muzzle. And this goes on lined up at the bottom. So it goes there like that. So if anything, it slightly overhangs at the bottom. Make sure that your eyes are lower than the top of your head. So it's going to go on there. So again, I'm going to score it. 
lots of slip on it. Yeah. Okay, put that in place. Again, making sure the eyes are woo, off the top, and it got a little bit. It'll have a little bit of an overhang at the bottom, but that's fine. Like that, you can see. So put that on. Give it a good wiggle. Again, start from the middle. Press out to the sides. And then we have these nose sections. Now, although I haven't indicated on the template, you have to cut that middle bit out because otherwise this is going to build up and it's going to be far too thick and you're going to have a problem. And these two rings go together and that's going to make the snout. So again, let's score. You can cut these out once they're in situ if you prefer. It's a little bit easier if you do. I'll have to cut some more out in a minute anyway. So put that on. There, like that and then this one then goes on top of it like that you see how we're slowly building that up in stages to give it some three-dimensional shape like that. now again we're going to have air trapped in there if we're not careful so what we have to do now is we have to put a hole through from there into the main body you can either do with this with your knife or you can do it with a paintbrush or whatever this might be too thick for my knife we're about to find out so I'm push it right in and give it a twist. And then I'm actually going to get my paintbrush in there to make sure I'm going into the body. That's so good. Right. We then got to put the nose on. Now, I've actually marked the template the wrong way. You actually have the flat bit goes at the bottom. So it's a slightly flatter section. That's what's on my template. I've marked it that way, but that is actually the bottom there on the template. And that's going to go over the top of that there. So again, put some slip on it, put it on there. It's going to go a little bit lower because we're going to have a bit of a curve. So you've ended up with something that looks a bit like that. Various pieces put together. So you get that on. Now we've got to make it work. And what we have to do now is smooth it all together. So starting from the bottom, smooth all of these pieces across. So it's a bit like a coil build in that respect but just with template pieces to make your coils. The other thing you could do is if you don't want to go into the head is you could leave it open under here um, because we're going to put a lower lip on. And that's what I did with this one. In fact, these actually the, the air hole is inside his mouth. But this works just as well. OK, so shake that on okay, like that and then do the same up the side. That and up the other side. Like that. And now we can work the head in a little bit. All the way around. Top of his nose. All that smoothed in. Up to his eyes. Like that. And there. And his eye might be easier. I'm just going to smooth around his eyes here, smooth them down onto the face. So he's starting to look a little bit more hippo like, and a bit less like a collection of clay lumps. Now, again, if you're finding you're having trouble smoothing things because your fingers are dirty, give them a rinse in some water and then dry them so they're clean, and you will find things a lot easier to smooth. Of course, you can use tools to do this if you wish. But at some of this stage of getting it nice and smooth, I find nothing really beats your fingers. Okay. Unless you've got a little corner like that that you can't get in. But let's get that in there. Okay, like that. Okay, all right. The next thing I'm going to do is this hippo has a lower lip under there, which we can have slightly open if you want, or closed. So again, I'm going to score it, put a slip on it, flip it upside down. And that goes under there, so that his lip comes almost to the end of the nose there. Got a bit of clay, hold it in. 
fill in that gap. And then again, get our smoothing tool, smooth it in, down there, down there. Just want to look on the side there as well, this is why it's not quite that big. Okay, and so if you want, move it over a little bit, gives him a nice smile. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put his ears on. So they have quite little small ears. Uh, I'm just going to tidy up that little bit there. Can't go much further. So we get the ears. Now you need to get them in your thumb and just give them a little fold like that. Yeah, and the same on the other one. Just pinch it in, give it a little, make it a little bit rounder. Then we get the knife. Just going to score. Bit stiff on it, and they go at the top of the head there, one there, and one there. Okay, making sure the curved side is pointing towards you. This is, I think, as soon as you start to put ears on things, they, ears and eyes, things start to take on a whole new character. And, um, and you can see ears start to look a little bit more hippo-like at this point. So I'm just going to smooth the head down into the ear like that. But to make sure these stay on, mm -hmm. because that one's already coming off, we've got to get around the back of the ear and put a little bit of clay in the back of the ears. Like Let's get a clean stick. Now this one has been sharpened to a point just by cutting the lollipop stick with a pair of scissors. And then using a bit of sandpaper or an emery board to just smooth it down so it's not too rough. So it's going around the back of the head like that. So I'll keep that ear on. Do the same with the other ear. There. Just get that there. <clears throat> All right, that goes in there. And I'm going to support that. Yes, yeah, so I don't push it off as I try to fix it. Just put my finger in there. Okay, smooth that down there and then there. Okay. And just tidy it up a little bit. There. Okay, so that is good. His ears on. That's better. Now, now stand still. His legs are collapsing a little bit with the weight. I'm just going to reshape them to keep him in place. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give him his nose. Now I have actually got a template for the nose, which is two round circles, but I'm actually going to just cut mine out of two balls of clay. Like that. And they actually sit on the edge of the nose there, so that when they're in the water, they can get their noses up into the air to breathe. So, a little bit of slip on it, on the end there, wiggle, 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 until it stops moving. Okay, same with the other side. Right there, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Okay, make sure it's on there nice and tight, it's not going to come off. And then I'm going to get my paintbrush, and I'm actually going to push down into here, which will help to make them stick, but it will also help to give him nostrils. Go. Next thing, I'm going to give him some eyes. This again, I'm going to use the paintbrush for. So, again, it's not a realistic representation of a hippo, so I'm not exactly worried about getting the eyes exactly where they would be on a real hippo. But you need to get them close enough to a real hippo so that it actually doesn't look like something completely different. So, these eyes are going to go in line with the nose and the ear there. So, one eye, ear there and the same there like that and I'm just going to get my paintbrush in I'm just going to wiggle it around to make those a little bit bigger one there one there okay. Try to smooth there so now to actually make the eyeballs again it's okay if you just want to leave the eyes like that that works too but I'm going to give him an eyeball the way I measure an eyeball so I make a ball of clay I see if it will go 
roughly in the socket. It won't in this case, so I could make that socket a little bit bigger. And then make that socket a little bit deeper too. So his eyeball actually fits. So, so let's have a look at that. Now that's a little bit big, so I'm going to cut that, cut a bit off it. I'm going to make two eyes out of this one ball, but I do it as I say, so it looks like it sort of almost fits the socket. Then try and cut it in half, or as close to being as half as I can manage. Then I'm going to roll it in my hand, see if they're both about the same size. So I feel actually that that eyeball is slightly bigger than the other one, so I'm going to stick a tiny bit off it. Roll it in my fingers again. Yeah, close enough. I'm going to wash my fingers and I'm also going to wash the palm of my hand because I don't want to have cracks in my eyeball. So I get my hand clean, my fingers clean, so I can roll it on a clean palm, make sure they're nice and smooth so I go to fit them. Then I get the slip, dab a tiny bit on the back of the eyeball. it down to the socket. Look at that. Eyeball number one. Eyeball number two. That to go in. And so by making them both at the same time, hopefully they'll look more or less the same size. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to give him some pupils in his eyes. And I'm going to use the pencil for this. And I'm into it at the moment making really cross-eyed creatures, so I'm going to push that in there. Like that. That and then make sure it's a nice sharp pencil so you can make a nice hole. There we go, one very confused looking hippopotamus. Next is going to be the tail. Around he comes. So I'm just going to use, there is again a template for the tail. They have quite a short little stubby tails. So I should give him a short little stubby tail on the back. So I said there is a template you can cut around if you want to. Or you can just use a little bit of clay like I'm going to do. Put that on there. Make sure it's in line between his ears and his legs. Otherwise it looks very weird that his tail doesn't lead off the back of his spine. Just going to smooth that in there. And then it comes down to just smoothing and cleaning and getting him right in the shape you want. So I'm just going to tie him up a bit here. Like that. Take him up under there. Make sure his legs haven't shrunk too much. Get the weight of him on top. And you can see there's some stress marks there. So I'm just going to get my tool now and just smooth those out. Make sure it's strong enough to hold it. Because there's quite a weight on top of those poor little legs to hold. Tuck him all up. If you want to at this point, you could give him some feet. I'm not going to, I'm just going to leave them blank. This is where you spend the extra bit of time now just smoothing it, tidying it, making sure it's all looking good. And then the very last thing to do is to make sure that the air that's in the head, which has gone into the body, can get out. So you get a knife in the middle of the legs there, stick it in, give it a good twist, make sure it goes in. A good way to check is to put a paintbrush in and make sure it can wiggle it around. And there he is, one hippopotamus. So I hope you're as much fun making him as I did designing him and uh, I'll catch you again another time. Bye!